In our last video on the history of the Sith, we told the story of Revan and Malak, Jedi heroes of the Mandalorian Wars who became self-proclaimed Dark Lords of the Sith. Drawn to the dark side by the pressures of war, in 3959 BBY, these two men raised an army and started their own war with the Republic, intent on creating a new Sith Empire. Their war split the Republic and the Jedi Order in two, as many flocked to join the heroes of the Mandalorian Wars in their new crusade. For this reason, this conflict was named the Jedi Civil War, and in this video, we'll be telling the story of this dark chapter of galactic history. Attention, Sergeant on deck! For months after the Battle of Malachor V, everyone believed that Revan and Malak were dead. They and their followers had disappeared into unknown space, and no one had heard from them since. Then, in 3959 BBY, they returned at the head of an invasion fleet, appearing above the Foros shipyards and opening fire on Republic forces without warning. At Foros, Darth Revan and Darth Malak proclaimed to the galaxy that they were the Dark Lords of a new Sith Empire, and they urged the people of the galaxy to join them. In the Battle of Foros, these new Sith captured a vast portion of the Republic Navy, stealing hundreds of ships from Drydock before retreating back to Sith space. They used these captured ships to bolster their original fleet and the one they were building with the Starforge, and they sent it out to conquer the Republic. In a matter of weeks, the Sith spread out from their holdings on Korriban and in the Unknown Regions, crushing Republic forces at Roach, Xilla, Alantine 6, and Yagdul. Revan and his followers urged their former comrades in the Republic and Jedi Order to join them and help them build their new empire. And many did. This was because Revan's Sith were different from the Orders that had come before. The ancient Sith had been entirely alien to the Republic, an existential threat from wild space. Exar Kun's Sith had mostly been a mix of Jedi and Republic traitors, but they went to great lengths to distance themselves from their former comrades and make clear there was something new. But Revan and Malak were heroes of the Republic. Their Sith were entirely homegrown. Their empire was just a corrupt remnant of the Republic. They were familiar in a way that the Sith hadn't been before, and they came at a time when people were losing faith in the Republic and the Jedi. Many in the Republic and the Jedi Order found it easy to make the same choice Revan's original followers had made to put their loyalty to the heroes of the Mandalorian Wars above their loyalty to crumbling, failed institutions. Many Jedi sided with Revan instead of the Council, and many in the Republic military switched sides, including some of the Navy's top officers such as General Derid, Mon Halan, and most significantly, Admiral Karath. And as the leaders of the Republic military jumped ship, vast numbers of their subordinates followed suit trading in their black and orange Republic jumpsuits for sleek chrome Sith Trooper armor. As Revan conquered vast swaths of the Republic, he kept a lot of local government structures intact, grafting old systems into a loose military hierarchy instead of attempting to redo everything from the ground up. Sith governors, many of them Dark Jedi, were usually installed on conquered planets with garrisons of Sith Troopers. They acted as overseers for the existing government, ensuring that the Sith always got their way. Nonetheless, on many worlds, very little actually changed under the Sith Empire apart from a greater push toward militarization, reinforcing the impression many had that the Sith weren't really much different from the Republic. The bulk of the Sith Empire itself was a massive military machine composed of armies of Sith troopers and war droids, squadrons of Rakatan-designed Sith fighters, and vast fleets of Interdictor-class cruisers and Centurion-class battlecruisers. Revan's Sith Order, which consisted of legions of Dark Jedi, Sith Assassins, and a selection of Sith Apprentices, Acolytes, and Lords, operated alongside the ordinary military forces. Both were under the overall command of Darth Revan and Darth Malak. The official capital of the Sith Empire was Korriban, where Revan founded a Sith Academy in the Valley of the Dark Lords, but in practice, the government of the Empire was highly mobile. The Sith Empire, despite controlling vast swathes of territory, 
effectively operated as a stateless force, a massive independent fleet run by a small clique of officers and Sith Lords who were always on the move. As we've described, the non-force sensitive elements of the Sith Empire strongly resembled the Republic, but the ordinary followers of Revan and Malak were rapidly corrupted by Sith teachings that spread through the ranks. The heroes of the Mandalorian Wars transformed into monsters, with formerly principled men like Saul Karath carrying out terrible atrocities in Revan's name, such as the bombing of Telos IV, in which Admiral Karath and Darth Malak cleansed an entire planet of life. For two years, the Sith had a decisive advantage, and there was seemingly little the Republic could do to stop them. The Sith conquered dozens of sectors in the Core Worlds, along the Inner Rimmer trade route, and along the Inner Corellian run, seizing major shipbuilding worlds of Fondor, Rendili, Corellia, and Duro. But it was in the Rim that Revan's most devastating victories were won. Between 3959 and 3957 BBY, the Sith pushed from Korriban all the way to the expansion region, conquering the Tyon Cluster and much of the Mid-Rim. By the second year of the war, the Sith controlled a full third of the known galaxy. The Republic was completely outmatched, not only by the Sith's infinite fleet, but by the tactical genius of Darth Revan. Revan systematically dismantled the Republic's defenses with surgical precision, and though few noticed at the time, he was very delicate in doing so. Revan went to great lengths to keep infrastructure and military production facilities intact, as despite the potential of the Star Forge, Revan preferred to use it as little as possible, instead shifting increasingly more of Sith military production onto captured facilities, wary of the station's corrupting influence. Revan would have succeeded easily were it not for Bastila Shen. Bastila was one of the Jedi Order's best and brightest, a young Jedi gifted in the art of battle meditation. Her gift allowed her to turn the tide of entire battles, and she helped the Republic win enough victories to hold together during the height of Revan's onslaught. In 3957 BBY, she dealt the Sith an even greater blow. She lured Revan and Malak into battle against a small Republic fleet, and then led a small team of Jedi Knights in boarding Revan's flagship, aiming to capture the Dark Lord. They cornered Revan on his flagship bridge, but even as they confronted him, another of the Sith vessels opened fire on Revan's own ship. For years, by this point, Darth Malak had been waiting for his chance. He'd wanted to take the title of Dark Lord from Revan since the beginning, and he disagreed with how his master was running the war. In 3958 BBY, he had even challenged Revan in a lightsaber duel, only for the Dark Lord to beat him and slice off his jaw as punishment. But when Revan was cornered by the Jedi, Malak saw another opportunity, a chance to kill all of his enemies in one fell swoop. He ordered his ship to fire on Revan's bridge, hoping to kill both Revan and Bastila. Revan was badly wounded by the attack, and he would have died had Bastila not pulled his body from the wreckage, used the force to keep him alive, and brought him back to the Jedi Council. The Council had originally hoped that Revan's defeat would cause the Sith Empire to collapse or falter, but they were mistaken. No sooner had the galaxy learned of Darth Revan's apparent death than Darth Malak claimed the title of Dark Lord and picked up where his master had left off, resuming the war with the Republic. With the Republic on the verge of collapse, the Jedi Council decided on a desperate last gambit. They healed Revan's broken body and used the force to wipe his mind, implanting him with a new personality, one loyal to the Republic. They created a false identity for him as a Republic soldier under Bastila's command, hoping that, over the course of working with Bastila, enough of his memories would resurface that he could lead the Republic to the Star Forge. Meanwhile, Darth Malak settled into place as the new Dark Lord of the Sith, naming Darth Bandon his new apprentice. Under Malak, the tactics of the Sith became far less subtle. Gone were the complex plans of Revan, and gone was his desire to preserve infrastructure and production facilities. Malak's attacks were overwhelming and incredibly destructive, and he came to rely on the Star Forge to a greater extent than Revan ever had. Also, Unlike Revan, Malak made it his main priority to hunt down Bastila, who remained a thorn in his side. 
in 3,956 BBY, he cornered her ship, the Endar Spire, above Taurus, where he unknowingly began the final chapter of the Jedi Civil War. Malak won the battle above Taurus, forcing Bastila, Revan, and Republic war hero Karthanasi to seek shelter on the planet's surface. There, they worked together to escape the forces of the Sith, and during their time together, Revan's memories finally began to resurface. Malak destroyed the surface of Taurus in a bid to kill Bastila, but she and her allies managed to escape to Dantooine, where Revan had a vision of he and Malak discovering the first star map all those years ago. The Jedi Council chose to retrain Revan as a Jedi, and then sent him, Bastila, and their allies to find the star maps, hoping to locate the Star Forge and stop the Sith once and for all. Like Revan and Malak had years before, Revan and Bastila used the incomplete Dantooine star map to locate others on Tatooine, Kashyyyk, and Manan. On the latter world, the Jedi killed Darth Bandon, but they were captured by Admiral Karath's flagship, the Leviathan, as they attempted to flee the system. Karthanasi killed Admiral Karath as he and the others attempted to escape the Leviathan, but he, Bastila, and Revan were confronted by Malak himself before they could get away. Malak revealed Revan's true identity and captured Bastila, who he tortured into falling to the dark side and becoming his new apprentice. Around the same time, Malak's fleet attacked Dantooine, destroying the Jedi Enclave there and crippling the Jedi Order. Despite the knowledge of who he used to be, Revan remained committed to the path of the light. He found one final star map on Korriban and then led the Republic fleet to Rakata Prime to destroy the Star Forge. At the same time, the Sith were also gathering in the Rakata system. With Bastila as his new apprentice, Malak believed himself invincible and he was gathering a vast fleet for a final offensive against the Core Worlds. A huge portion of the Sith Armada, as well as Admiral Varko and most of the Sith's top officers and Dark Jedi, had all gathered at the Star Forge. After a confrontation with Bastila on Rakata Prime, Revan and the others joined Admiral Dodona and the Republic Navy in the assault on the Star Forge. They boarded the Star Forge and fought their way to Bastila, who fought Revan one on one. Revan eventually managed to convince Bastila, with whom he developed a romantic relationship over the course of their mission, to abandon the Sith and use her battle meditation to aid the Republic. As Revan went off alone to confront Malak, Bastila helped the Republic fleet shatter the Sith defensive line and close in on the Star Forge itself. In a final duel, the redeemed Revan killed Darth Malak, and then he and his allies fled the Star Forge before the Republic destroyed its orbital stabilizers causing it to fall into the sun. Just like that, Revan, Bastila, and the Republic broke the back of the Sith Empire. Malak and all of the Sith leaders were killed in the Battle of Rakata Prime, as was the vanguard of the Sith Armada. The Republic's resounding victory won them the entire war, as the now leaderless Sith Empire tore itself apart in its own brief but destructive civil war. In a single day, the Sith went from the verge of victory to a resounding defeat. But the story of Revan's Sith doesn't end with the Jedi Civil War. The remnants of the Sith escaped to the Outer Rim, and from the shattered battlefields of the Mandalorian Wars, they now led a new war against the Jedi. But that's a story for another time, namely next week when we tell the story of the Sith Triumvirate. But what do you think? Which Sith Lord do you like more? Revan or Malak? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.